So a lot of the time when you make a website, you'll probably at some point need to perform some kind of task that takes time to do, like fetching data from a server or submitting data to a server, or just because you like using set timeout. Now at moments like these, we often want to let the user know that something is loading and it's common practice to show some kind of loader or spinner. Now, these have been around since the dawn of PCs, but thankfully we're blessed with the ability to make them a little more fun and interesting these days for the web with CSS animations. So in this short series, I'm going to show you how to create three different loaders using HTML and CSS animations. And I'm going to create a video for each one, starting with this one on the left, which is kind of like a take on the classic spinner loader. Before you start though, I would suggest that you already have an understanding of HTML and CSS since that's what we're gonna be using to create these loaders. So if you don't, then definitely check out my HTML and CSS crash course tutorial first of all. The link to this playlist is down below. And likewise, you should probably at least understand the basics of keyframe animations. Now, if you don't have the foggiest what they are, definitely check out this first of all, CSS animation tutorial. Again, the link to this playlist is gonna be down below. Also, I've created course files for this series and I've got two branches right here on this repo, CSS Loaders Tutorial. We have starter files and final files. The starter files are the base files and code where we're gonna start from and the final files contain all the code for the three different loaders. So if you wanna download one of these different branches, you can select which one you want and then go to code and then download zip. So I'll leave the link to this repo down below as well. All right, so I've got the starter files open here in VS Code, and you can see we just have two files, an index.html, which is a very simple HTML file. In the head, we're linking to a styles.css file as well, which I'll show you in a second. And in the body, we just have some comments, one for each of the different loaders that we're gonna create. Now, inside this styles.css, we just have a body rule at the top, giving it a max width of 960 pixels, a margin 200 pixels top and bottom to bring it down from the top a little bit, or to left and right, so we centralize this 960 pixel column, and we display it as flex and justify the content to space around so that all of the different elements we place inside the body, all of the different loaders, they're gonna be spaced vertically along the browser, just so they look nicer, okay? So that's the base files. Now I've got a package for VS Code installed called Live Server, which means I can right click any HTML file and open it with a live server. And then when I do that, it opens it in a browser at this address right here using localhost. So if I do that again, you'll see it open up right here, okay? Now to install that, you can go to extensions and then search for live server. It's this package right here. So just install that and then you can open it up the same way so we can preview our work as we go forward. Okay then, so let's start with the HTML for the spinner itself. So to create this, I'm gonna create a div with a class of spinner, first of all. And then inside this, I'm gonna create two more divs. We don't need to give those a class like so. Now I'm doing two divs because we're gonna have two arcs inside the spinner which spin around. So we're gonna animate each of these separately. So let me save that and now we can style this up. So underneath the spinner comment, I'm gonna target the spinner div, which is the div that wraps those other two divs right here. And inside here, the first thing I'll do is give this a width and height. So the width is gonna be 100 pixels and the height is gonna be 100 pixels. And by the way, you can play with all of these different values that I'm giving to these elements. It's not set in stone that it must be these values. So we'll also give this a position of relative because the two divs inside this, we're gonna position absolutely relative to this div right here. So this has to have a position of relative. Okay, so now let's target those divs inside the spinner. So spinner div like so and we'll give each of these a box sizing of border hyphen box and position them absolute like so. Now I'm gonna give them a width of 100% so they take up the full 100 pixels and also a height of 100% so they take up the full height of 100 pixels as well. All right, so let me spell height correctly. There we go. After that, we need to also now define those little arcs. Now we're gonna create those using a border. So the first thing I'll do is say the border is eight pixels and solid 
and transparent. Now we won't see if it's transparent and that's all the way around. But all I want to do is apply a border in one direction where we can see it. So for example, the top. So to do that, I can just say border hyphen top hyphen color. And I'm going to give this a hex of 8D 60F5, which is kind of like a purple color. So we apply this border of eight pixels in width and solid and transparent all the way around, but then we override this transparent just for the border top to give it this purple color. And if I save this now, we should see this weird border thing right here. We are gonna sort this out, okay? So this is the border top. If you imagine the border right would be here, bottom here and left here, but those are all transparent. It's just the border top we're giving this color of purple to. All right, so we want to make this circular, not a straight line. So we can give this a border radius of 50% to make it circular. And if we save that, that looks a bit better. Now it's an arc and that's the thing that's gonna spin around. Now there's only one of them there, why is that? Well, it's because they're both overlaying each other, all right, because they're positioned absolutely. So they're in the same position. There are two of them, but they're just one on top of the other. So let's now take the second div and style that ever so slightly differently. So I'm gonna say spinner and then we want the div inside it, then nth child two. So this gets us the div, which is the second child, which is this. So inside here, I'm gonna say the border. In fact, I'm gonna copy this like so to override all the borders again so it doesn't inherit this, it overrides that. So again, we're saying now it's transparent in all directions. And this time I'm going to style the border bottom color instead of top. So border hyphen bottom hyphen color is gonna be the same hex. So let me copy and paste that in like so, and then save it. And now if we take a look at this, we can see two arcs opposite. So that's looking quite good. So now we've created that basic HTML and CSS, we can start to apply our CSS animations to it. So then let's start this animation. So to create the animation, we need a keyframes. And again, if you have no idea what keyframes are, definitely check out my CSS animation tutorial. First of all, then this will make a lot more sense. I'm gonna give this animation a name and I'm gonna call it Spinner 1. It's called Spinner 1 because we're gonna have Spinner 1 and Spinner 2 to animate these two arcs separately. So let's do spinner one first of all, and I'm gonna say at 0%, so at the start of the animation, I want to apply the following CSS properties. First of all, a transform, and this is gonna be used to rotate it. So let's say rotate, and it's gonna be zero degrees to begin with. So it's not rotating at all at the beginning. I also want to animate the border width. So these are the two properties we're animating. The border width is gonna go thicker and thinner, and eventually we're gonna rotate it round and round. So to begin with, the border width is gonna be 10 pixels. Now I put eight here, but let's change that to 10, and let's change that to 10 to keep them consistent. So I'm just making it a bit thicker. All right, so that is the initial position. I'm gonna now just duplicate this and change zero to 50. So halfway through the animation, I want to be at the point where we've rotated 180 degrees. So it's gonna animate from this to this for half of the animation halfway through. And at this point as well, I want the border width to be one pixel. So it's gonna start at 10 and then by halfway through, it should have animated to a thin border of one pixel. So then I want to do the end point, which is 100% and that's gonna be 300 and 60 degrees, so it's gonna animate from here to here, the whole circle eventually, by the time the animation is complete, and the border width is gonna go back to 10 pixel. So it's shrinking and getting bigger, the border, as we go on. So that's pretty much it for the animation. I just need to apply it to this div right here. So let me say animation, and that is gonna be spinner one, which is what we called it. It's gonna last about 1.2 seconds, but you can give your own values to these. The animation is going to be linear, so it doesn't speed up or slow down at different points like ease in does or ease out. And we also want to repeat it. And in order to repeat an animation, we can just say infinite. So it goes round and round and round and it never stops. So if I say this and preview, we can see now that this thing right here is animating. And it's animating them both, even though we've only applied the animation to this thing right here and not this. But remember, this applies to both divs. 
Now, this is okay, but I want to alternate the thickening and thinning of the border for each of these different arcs. Now, at the minute, they're both getting bigger at the same time and both shrinking at the same time. But what I want to do is alternate that so that when one arc gets thicker, the other one gets smaller and vice versa. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to have to create another animation. So I'm going to copy this and paste it underneath and call this Spinner 2. Now, I want to do exactly the same thing in terms of rotating. It's still going to go around in a circle, but this time I want the border width to start at one pixel when the other one is 10. Then I want it to be thick, 10 pixels, when the other one is 1. And then I want it to go back to thin, one pixel, when the other goes back to 10. So now they're alternating. One is thin, the other is thick. So it's like pulsating between the two. So if I save that now and preview, then nothing has changed because we've not applied this animation to the second one. So let's do that animation. And that is going to be spinner two. And it's going to be 1.2 seconds again. It's going to be linear again. And again, it's going to be infinite. So it keeps on going around. Save that. And this time, well, yep, it looks okay. But they're kind of on top of each other. So what I'm going to do is just refresh this to see if it catches the change. Yep, there we go. And that looks better. So now we have one thin and one thick. And that is our spinner loader. Like I said, these values are completely up to you. You can change this to say how fast or slow it's going to go. These values, you could change the width and the height etc you can change what you want about this this is just a generic spinner that we can use and customize so in the next video i'm going to show you how to create a bouncing ball loader